Hi, in this latest Facebook Live chat in our Just Society series, I'm talking to Dr. Leslie Budd, reader in Social Enterprise, one of my colleagues who leads a research stream in the Citizenship and Governance Strategic Research Area. I'm Simon Ray, I'm the director of that research area here at the Open University and a professor of law. But Leslie, first of all, what is Social Enterprise? Social Enterprise is a, an organisation that produces goods and services for a social purpose and not a profit motive, and any surplus is recycled into the community. So it's important in local and regional development, of which is the basis of my expertise in economics. Great. So you've got an interdisciplinary approach, but there's economics at its core. Yes. And we're looking today at uh, Brexit and the implications for the Union of the United Kingdom. So yes. can I say, did, did you and other economists and, and other social scientists, did you anticipate Brexit? Well, the result, the result, no. I think most of us thought there would be a narrow victory for Leave, and we did wonder why you would have a referendum with all its complex constitutional, economic, social, and political challenges. And that actually it would be damaging, most economists thought it would be damaging to the UK. Um, it was a surprise and it was a shock, but it is what it is, and it's how you manage that process going forward. So you've co-edited the book, uh, The Political Economy of Brexit, uh, which looks at some of the implications of that. And um, uh, in particular, you were already working on the unions within the United Kingdom, weren't you? Yeah, um, this came about because I, between 2014 and 2016, I was Special Economic Advisor to the Committee for Enterprise Trade and Investment of Northern Ireland Assembly. And I was asked to write a briefing note on Brexit um, by one of the members of the Legislative Assembly. And that briefing Well, that was quite smart of them. They, well, it was, but they ha hadn't even thought about it. And it went to the Deputy First Minister, and it went to the Taoiseach, so it had some influence. But I could argue it's been become the bane of my academic <laughs> career because it's taken over. I now do so many public events. Uh, and one in Milton Keynes with a, a former cabinet minister. Right. So, so you're talking about Brexit partly from Northern Ireland, but also Scotland and Wales? Yes. Well, um, yeah, see, because it, it flows from the special case, I would argue, about Northern Ireland and its relationship with Ireland, then to the other devolved nations, particularly economically, and particularly in the light of the first Scottish referendum on independence. Whether we have a second one is an open question. And what about the knock-on effect of the general election as well? That's been interesting because Brexit was the elephant in the room, mm. but the election issues seem to focus on the impact of austerity. And my own view is Brexit came about because of the impact of the gl global financial crisis on all regions outside London and the southeast actually had less national income per head now than they did in 2008. And my own view is that Europe was the wrong target. Europe was blamed for the ills that came about as a result of austerity policies uh, and the decline of a number of regions. So, so that's for our uh, catchphrase, if you like, or hashtag of just society yeah. and the overall mm -hmm. idea of citizenship and governance. This is very, very important. You're yes. saying that underlying the, the Brexit referendum and the general election result, it's really about a sense of unfairness. Yes. People have grievances, yes. which you think are really economic? Well, they're socio-economic. Um, all governments have had not activist regional policies, so privileging London and the South East business and financial services is all very well, but actually uh, that actually cause, that causes a spatial um, imbalance. It also causes a socio-economic imbalance. So to the people who got left behind, if you like, by those changes in the economy, are located out in the poorer parts of the UK. So in terms of just society, any reasonable society would do something about re-establishing that balance. So was the first, um, and so far only in recent years, Scottish referendum on independence, was that about a, a kind of anger? I think 
Scotland's complex in the sense that for a long time the Labour Party saw it as a personal fiefdom to be unchallenged. And I think it, since the election, first election of Margaret Thatcher in 1979, the idea of an act of union, partners within a union, has actually been undermined. And so there's been a powerful sense of resentment, if you like, against England as a result of that. Mm -hmm. And also the, the wider European Union setting, where a lot of Scots see themselves as more European than they do British, for example. So I think those things, culture, a sense of constitutional injustice, mm -hmm. and parts of Scotland, again, getting left behind, has, has been the, the, the basis of a lot of those grievances. And in Northern Ireland, did you anticipate the... Uh, sorry to keep asking whether you anticipated things, but is it of interest as to whether social scientists, economists, political scientists can predict almost what's going to happen? Would you have seen the DUP Conservative support coming to light? Or was that a surprise? No, it wasn't, it wasn't a surprise because of the nature of the DUP itself. Um, which, is, which is what? Well, it's it, a combination of based in rural Ireland mm -hmm. and also the poorer parts of Belfast and the Free Presbyterian Church. So it's the political arm of the Free, Pres Free Presbyterian Church. They're obviously criticised heavily for their social conservatism, but I've always found the members of the, Lord, of the Legislative Assembly I dealt with in the DEP complex and interesting in that they were very rooted in their communities and looking to um, maintain the social welfare, if you like, of those communities. But I think you know, desperate, desperate, desperate needs calls for desperate measures after mm. a hung parliament. Yes. So, yeah. I, 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 the, the traditional link is obviously the the Ulster Unionists. Yes. But can I ask? I think which surprises me is uh, people are saying in Northern Ireland it's somehow unfair and unwise to have the government linked to the DUP because that impinges on the honest broker rigorous impartiality role. But on the other hand, Sinn Féin is actually seeking power in Dublin, and so it could have become part of a coalition in uh, the Republic of Ireland, couldn't it? It could and then, do. And then it'd be the other way around, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, I look, I mean political parties look up, you know, try to look after their own, and it is politics. And given the unfortunate interregnum where the, the Assembly is not meeting at the moment, mm. you're going to position yourself in that way. The, it just seems to me, though, that this opens up the possibility of the breakup of the union. Yes. Following Tom Nairn's 1977 book, when he warned against the dangers of devolution, in that the deal between the DUP and the Tories makes a special case for Northern Ireland. Mm. But a lot of the constituency of the DUP relies in agriculture, relies on cooperation with the South. So there has to be a special deal almost for the whole of Ireland. And then you could argue, well, why not a special case for Scotland and then yeah. Wales? And this is part of a bigger issue, I suppose, which goes back to Brexit, which is again very confusing. If our terminology is, are you a unionist or a nationalist, it becomes quite difficult to work out why are the nationalists in Scotland in favour of the union with Europe, but not with the UK? And are unionists in Northern Ireland in favour of a union that's European? No. Um, What's really going on with the united bit of the United Kingdom? Is it a federalist kingdom? Is that the future? Or no kingdom? Well, my, I, my preference is for a federalist system because federal systems have greater economic growth, have greater equality. Um, and like, like, like United States? Or Germany. Or Germany. Canada. Right. And even Spain when it was the post the girl of success the EU before the crisis mm. is a federal and what are the features system. then of a federal state that works well a federal so you 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 well the two principles are solidarity and subsidiarity which is what the European Union is meant to be in that you have you have to have a, a strong center so things like defense law and order but you devolve powers and financing to uh, the appropriate level of government mm. And you have what's called fiscal federalism, where you share resources between poor and richer. Um, so, final question for me. The Open University is coming up to its 50th anniversary. By the time of our 100th anniversary, 
Will there be a United Kingdom with Scotland, Wales, England, Northern Ireland in the same state? I'm not a betting man, but I think there won't be a United Kingdom in the same way. But you could have a looser federal association. And that's always been the history of Europe. These things go in, and if you only happen to now look at the Balkans. Dr. Leslie Budd, thank you very much. Thank you.